So here's how to complete your week three Dropbox assignment, right? Um, I'm going to go back here um, into uh, uh, the course overview. Now, um, there have been some minor correctives that you don't need to concern yourself with. Uh, thanks to our, your classmate, Dorian. She um, was with me uh, 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 for our Zoom meeting uh, last evening, and um, she pointed out correctly that there were parts of the assignment, the Dropbox assignment, that were that were, didn't make any sense. Okay, so um, I went back, and she was exactly right. So um, I went back and kept what was what was useful, and then um, uh, edited uh, the rest. But had to do a little bit of a work around so that you can get uh, to your assignment. Okay. Let me go back now. I'm viewing this as as you would see it as a student. If you're in week three, historical perspectives, you're going to go down here and you'll see a web page. Not, not a discussion topic, not a quiz, um, but you're going to see a web page down here. It's an assignment. It's a due June 3rd assignment. Week three research and theory Dropbox, how to do. Huh. What you're going to do is go down here and click here. Okay. Um, because of the limitations of my being able to add assignments, um, these online courses are, 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 are somewhat baked in. Um, it, you needn't concern yourself with, but this, this link takes you to another place in, in, in the course, but not to worry. You know, you, you've got it. I'm, I'm, I'm Matthew Irvin, uh, marriage and family student. So you're going to see the same thing I am. See, so Please go down there and click on this link. Okay, it's going to take you here. Okay, and you're going to go, oh my God, I can't, you know, this is a file I can't do anything with. I can't answer. Now, again, you're going to, I'm going to be very clear about this. Okay, um, you don't have to answer each of these questions specifically. Right, you know, I mean, um, but, but what you're going to want to do now is to go down here, scroll down, use your copy feature on your computer, right? Go down, scroll down here, and then um, you're going you're gonna to want to go down and um, highlight everything. And then I click Control-C. You can click Copy. Then I'm going to go open up a, a Word file, okay? Um, I'm going to go here, open up a new Word file, and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click Control P for paste. Okay, now, again, these are guidelines for how you work through this. Please don't submit this and answer every little question here. That's not what I'm asking you to do. These, these are questions that you, you need to answer in an essay form for one part. Uh, there's two parts to this assignment. So for part one, you're going to need to find an, a, a, you know, a, uh, an article. Okay, I don't know about news articles. Just go and follow uh, the library links that we've discussed that I've provided for you. And go to, go to Sinclair's library and get an article about the family. Now... Here's a hint. Get an article that you might use in your final paper, right? That way you can you you can you can you can reuse it, you know, for your final paper. But so you're going to find a scientific a peer-reviewed report, okay? And then here's the mechanics. You put a cover name, and I don't need your tartan number or any of this mess. Just your name, the course and section number, the title of the assignment. And the date, the title of the assignment is Research and Theory Assignment. Okay, you don't, um, part of this you're going to have to write, okay, so you're going to write, there's two parts of this. There's a short paper that you're going to write uh, that's going to be two or three paragraphs long. And there is another kind of a form here, you know, part two is assessing the author's theoretical approach. Now, so what what please don't go down here and submit all of this work and give me a checklist. I know some of you 
Let's, you know, that's a nice way for you to think, but that's not what you're being asked to do. These are, these are things that you need to address in your two or three paragraphs. What kind of, okay, what was a sample a convenient sample or a random sample? What does that mean? Basically, if you're doing a case study or you're doing a clinical piece, you know, it's going to be, it's not going to be a random sample. Right? Unless you're, you're drawing a sample from a population. So, you know, if, if it's a survey or you're looking at data somebody else collected on a large scale, it's going to be probably a random sample. Experimental methods also, where, where you have an experimental group and a control group, they are random samples too, right? Uh, you know, uh, as well. Okay. So, does it represent a population? Now, for some research, you know, if you, if you choose like a, a clinical analysis, you, you know, we're, they, they may talk about whether it's applicable to larger groups or not, but that might not be a question. If it is a big kind of pattern, right, you know, uh, in your research, then you're going to have to decide whether that whether that's an important question or not, okay? Um is a sample size large enough and followed by a sample size. You know, here's an example. If I'm, if the N is 12 people and you're making an assertion about the state of Ohio or even, even Dayton or Montgomery County where Dayton sits, you got a problem, right? Okay, so what did they use? What kind of methods did they use? Survey, a participant observation, an experiment, a clinical case study analysis of existing data, right? And then here's another hint I put down. If a survey uh, using sample size and statistical techniques uh, from a population are critical questions. For participant observation or clinical case studies, being able to generalize to a population from the sample is not that much of an issue. You can acknowledge that. All right. So um, move my little head over here. This is a qualitative study. In other words, these small scale things, if you're doing a case study or you're observing people or you're interviewing people, that is, um, that's a qualitative study. If you're looking at numbers, um, analysis of existing data, experiments, um, you know, that's a quantitative study. So it's, it, this might be difficult for you to understand the researchers' understanding of the, of the, of the literature. They're going to write a literature report, and they're going to draw the, the researchers' theory and method align with what they were trying to find. Was there researcher bias that you could detect? Okay. Do you have any considerations uh, uh, left out, or do they overemphasize other considerations? Okay. So, you know, I mean, uh, you know, basically, uh, and then you rate it from 1 to 10. You know, I mean, would, would you give it a 9 or a 10, you know, or, 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 or did they do what they said they were going to do? Okay, that's, so that's part one. Please, again, do not answer these, blah, 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 yes, no, don't, don't give me an outline, blow this in. You know, use this, these are instructions on how to do it, okay? Now, here's part two, okay? And this is a tool, okay? So, uh, uh, use the same research article you've cited for part one. After you've uh, read it, re read through it again and indicate why for yes if the researchers appro uh, uh, reflects a particular statement and not applicable if the researcher doesn't reflect a particular statement. You know, I mean, and what you're going to do is, it, what this is, is a way for you to analyze the research. It's a score, okay? So there's 30 kind of criteria you read through. Now, if your research has more than one perspective, um, but as much as, uh, you know, write as much as possible to determine the, um, uh, the theoretical perspectives or perspectives of your research, you should try as much as possible, okay? Um, here's how you determine that. Okay.
If you have a Y or yes for the for numbers 1, 7, 13, 19, or 25, the researcher, ha researcher has a conflict theory perspective. Let's take a look at that. What's 25? Those who don't uh, have enough must struggle with those who have for resources. So if you're reading an article about about poverty and access, family access to homeschooling tools, and how you know that's going to be that's going to be a, you know that's going to be a conflict you know uh, issue and uh, take twenty five right okay or some people are discriminated against or something like that in an allocation of resources. For example, uh, there were there were people who wanted to discuss uh, GBLT adoption, um, couples adopting um, children, and there's discrimination. That's a conflict uh, perspective, okay? And so, um, you know, again, you know, go down through here, and you can do a score. And then for part two, write a brief paragraph. You don't need to give me this is a tool for you, right? Write another brief care paragraph, theory, uh, summarizing the perspective or perspective of the author's research, and include this, uh, you, you can include this decision tree if you want. That, that will be useful. An author might have more than one perspective, um, developmental theory and conflict theory. So, you know, it, you know write a little summary there, okay? So what you're going to have when you're done here, right, okay, um, you know, is a is a cleaned up um, uh, paper, you, and you don't even have to necessarily copy and download this. You can write it. Um, you can write it up. Uh, you know, in an, in another document. Save your document, please. Don't tell me I lost my my paper. Don't try to do this on a cell phone or an iPad. Okay, do it. At, you know, on a laptop or a computer, please. You cannot do this work on the cell phone. No way. Okay, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't fly. Believe me, trust me on this. I know we hear that a lot, uh, that phrase, but, but there, there are reasons. Okay, so, basically, um, you know, this is what you'll do for this assignment. Now, okay, so what do we do when we're done with this assignment? Let's switch back, let's switch screens, okay? When you're done writing up your three, your two to three page paper, okay, you just kind of, you know, get it, and you save it on your computer. You go and you upload it here, okay? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm submitting this here and clicking it on, uh, and I'm going, um, uh, I'm going, like, here, I'm going to make sure I'm still a student, and I'm going to go down in here click uh, Matthew Urban's And I'm going to submit that to the Dropbox. Boom. You're done. Okay? This assignment, right, again, you know, it should, and, and please use APA format citations and a title page and page numbers and all the stuff that you need to do when you write up a paper. Don't don't flip out and, and and barrel through things and do half of the assignment. It never works. Okay, this will get you to where you need to be to submit this work. Okay, um, uh, again, you know, uh, we we updated, we worked a little bit to read through the assignment. Uh, me and your fellow student, uh, yeah, who's exercised her quiet leadership in um, uh. In, in working through this assignment, the, the old text of it with me, this is a new, improved, updated version. Please submit it. I will ask you to submit it. Um, you know, and I'm going to ask you, it is the 29th, okay? Uh, I'm looking at the calendar here. So you've got one, two, three, four, f about five days to, to submit, uh, uh, you know, this assignment. Again, my recommendation is to make it easier on yourself, and as you do your final paper, review one of the articles that you might choose for your final paper, okay? Thank you, and have a great uh, weekend. All right.